One of the most fundamental theories of geology related to the first 1 billion years of Earth, our moon, and the rest of the inner solar system may well be simply wrong. Before the Apollo missions, we did not know much about our planet's moon, although we assumed it was about the same age of the Earth, which is 4.543 billion years old. Thus, via six Apollo missions which landed on the moon, we brought back 842 pounds or 382 kilograms worth of rocks, involving 2200 samples. When many of these rocks, now back on Earth, were dated, something highly unusual was found. While these rocks dated to between 2.8 billion and 4.53 billion years old, the vast majority of these samples from numerous different spots on the moon were found to be between 3.8 and 3.9 billion years old. Because of this, it was assumed that the vast majority of the moon's surface experienced some form of climactic event sometime during this 100 million year long time span, which caused much of it to melt and then recrystallize. Based on the fact that these moon rocks were obtained from numerous impact basins, it led to an important theory which was initially termed the Lunar Cataclysm. It proposed that many of these rock samples were indeed the same age because between 3.8 and 3.9 billion years ago, a sudden uptick in the rate of impact events occurred on the moon, perhaps causing an increase in impact events by a factor of 4,000. Adding to this was the fact that Earth's oldest known rock at the time dated to the exact same time period with no distinct rocks being found before that era. It was thus proposed that not only did our moon experience a threefold increase in impact events, but also Earth, Mars, and the rest of the inner solar system in a cataclysm known as the Late Heavy Bombardment. Earth, for example, was theorized to if it had experienced the same model rate of impacts as the moon during this 100 million year time span, have had more than 20,000 impact craters wider than 20 kilometers form. For comparison, the most recent 100 million years of Earth has only resulted in 16 impact craters of that size. The late heavy bombardment theory soon became widely accepted as fact and was even used to model the formation of our early solar system, with one model suggesting that a now destroyed fifth rocky planet that may have once existed between Mars and Jupiter was hurled into the asteroid belt, throwing many of these smaller objects into the inner solar system. Yet, in recent years, some scientists have pointed out a number of very notable flaws in this theory of the late heavy bombardment. For one, such a heavy ancient impact rate would have surely vaporized Earth's water. And yet, evidence has been found that Earth not only contained an ocean between 3.8 and 3.9 billion years ago, but also all the way back to 4.4 billion years ago. And there is abundant circumstantial evidence that some form of primitive life existed on Earth 4.28 billion years ago, which would have almost certainly gone extinct if such a heavy rate of impact events subsequently occurred. But the most damning evidence I could simply explain as sample bias. Looking at the six Apollo landing sites in the area that was explored, it only represents a total of 12% of the moon. All of these sites were in close proximity to one of the moon's largest impact craters, the 1146 kilometer or 712 mile wide Mare Imbrium. This ancient impact event occurred when our protoplanet 260 kilometers or 162 miles wide collided with our moon 3.9 billion years ago. Devastating the surface, a wide swath of the moon was heated to high temperatures and ejecta fell across much of the moon. Thus, it is quite likely that every single lunar sampling location thus far was not made in different impact basins, but rather the very same singular massive impact basin. In other words, the ages of zircons we used to date these rocks were reset when they melted and subsequently recrystallized, biasing us into thinking these rocks originated from thousands of separate impact events in the same brief time span. So, did the late heavy bombardment actually occur? As it stands, the evidence isn't looking very good for this theory. But it could be finally proven or disproven if our next crewed moon mission lands at a site far outside of the Mare Imbrium impact basin and related ejecta blanket. As a final note, I would like to thank my new patron Kaiwi for supporting this channel.